two. Two balls remaining of the fourth over. And it's Cross who's on strike because that did go a long way up in the air. It's a good catch. And the bat is um, crossing. So two wickets down already in Karl Kircher, bowled by Moria. He went for six. And there you can see some, some youngsters from local school, no doubt, in. And watching the cricket today, Cross is on four. Make that five now. Uh, moves to five, not out, and it's gone and up to... Oh, the board already ticked over. Maybe it already ticked over. 27 for two. Sometimes they're quick and sometimes they're not quite so quick. Siaka with that uh, really good catch off the bowling of Sofa for 15. He's out there so for 10 balls, actually, not nine, 10 balls. Uh, three fours. Uh, perhaps looking for the first, what would have been the first six of the game. Um, and he had to keep his, had to keep his eye on it. Yeah. And in fairness, um, he blinked there, if not closed his eyes as the ball came down into his hands. But he, he grabbed the, the opportunity, which is the main thing. Now, again, that could be quick, running through for a single here. And they are. Well, we, we, we've mentioned areas where PNG can improve in their fielding, but they've got a bit of energy and they're certainly alert out here first thing today. Well, well they're well, well up for it, especially after those first two overs. They, would have, they could have easily have put their heads down, but uh, it was that wicket uh, that they got early, early on in the third over. That's just given them a lift here and obviously Scotland giving away a wicket by skying one up in the air, which was a very good catch. Never easy to catch in a clear blue sky. Very, very difficult, uh, but it's a very good catch. They've now suddenly found a bit of energy. They're running around, uh, making a lot of noise now. Well, it's four overs gone at 28 for two here, Scott. And interesting you mentioned that, 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 that clear sky, because, you know, players will, will, will tell, tell me and, and others, of course, it's not easy in taking those catches at night time when, when you've got nothing to sort of uh, check your distance on taking That's those right. catches. Well, obviously, this is clearly not night time. It's, it's a beautiful, glorious afternoon, but it's the same thing. Yeah. It's exactly the same thing. It's a clear sky, so there's that depth perception. Depth, is, yeah. yeah, yeah. Barrington facing his second delivery. Oh, and that's worked way behind square. I thought it was going to be up to start with it, but it's OK. Uh, they'll settle for one, so Barrington is off the mark. Barrington with 63 consecutive appearances for Scotland in T20 international cricket. That's more than any other player uh, in, in this format. Uh, he's been around a few years as Richie Barrington, and he's been part of some of Scotland's highest and some of the lowest moments. He'll be wanting to make sure that this 2021 T20 World Cup is one of the highlights. And he certainly can make it so if he can uh, perform today, along with other days. Cross is facing, and he's pushing that into the offside for no run. So Moriart is back on bowling his second over, having struck very early on in his first. Well, this is brilliant bowling for Moriart. He's just swinging it back. He's bowled slow left arm. But the fact that he swings it is what's making, him di making it difficult for the Scottish batsmen. And I think all Scottish batsmen do set up for a bit of width. Um, you know, usually, usually the case um, with the teams of, you know, Scotland, the players from there, they, they like to play with width. Oh, that comes back in. That's what he's doing well, isn't it? Shaping it back in and uh, Cross does well to keep it out. Yeah, I just think the batsmen are looking too square at the moment. You know, when a, when a bowler's swinging it back in like that, you don't want to be looking to play him through square uh, point, uh, but they're, they're continuously making the same mistakes. You've got to try playing back up the ground, back past the bowler, mid on, mid off. When the bowler's swinging it back in, last thing you want to do is trying to cut him or play square drives because it's a very, very dangerous shot to play uh, when the ball is swinging back. Moria to cross, cross on five. Full and driven, and driven for one. A little bit of dancing going on between the pair as they go through for that single. In actual fact, despite the diving attempts, and they are really putting so much in at the moment, so much effort being put in here by Papua New Guinea. Sadly, um, that's still a four from the, their point of view, and it's a four for Cross. He moves on to nine. Yeah, better from Cross now. That's what we were talking about, playing up, up down the ground uh, to the left arm swing bowler rather than through square point. Uh, it's a much safer option and obviously scoring four runs there, getting value for shots. 33 for two, two balls left of the fifth over. The start of this latest Group B match and Moria again in bowls. A little bit shorter, very nearly gets an edge, just fiddling at that one well, a little bit. Th that is the danger if you're going to look square against the left armour. You know, some will swing back through the gate, some won't swing and, and carry on with the arm and you could nick it because you're playing with half a bat. You know, you've got to be you got to be on your game you've got to work it out uh, pretty early 
play down the ground. It's a very, very, really nice pitch. Uh, the ball's coming on. There's a bit of bounce in the pitch. Uh, should be a nice high-scoring game, but the, the Scottish batsmen have got to be on their on their game today. So we've got one ball left of the fifth over Moria. It is to bowl it to cross on nine and a slower ball. So he is trying to mix it up. I and mean, the thing is, at the end of that fifth over, 33 for two, Berrington on one, cross on nine. We shouldn't be surprised by this. Obviously, they were really disappointed with their performance and their result uh, at the weekend. But they're here for a reason. And we've just seen a couple of overs there, if not more, of the reason why they're here. Uh, a little bit more from you, perhaps, Ravi, on that. And then for the first time today, will be... Dan Norcross. Yeah, I think the game's sitting pretty even right now with Scotland 33 for two. Um, I think Papua New Guinea have just found a bit of energy there, obviously picking up those two wickets uh, in the last couple of overs has really given them a boost. And I think Scotland, in this position here, they need a nice big partnership now. If they can get a partnership of a, of a 50, 60 plus, they'll feel really comfortable to go on and get 150 plus, but uh, it's a really important time for them now. Hello, Ravi. Hello. I was just marvelling at, uh, I'll come back to it in a minute, um, King Kev, as he wandered around. Soper starts a new over, punched off the back foot into the covers, can't beat the field, there's no run. He was, do he was doing walking and, uh, and commentary. Yeah, don't often see that, do you? It was a bit like watching Saturday Kitchen, wasn't it? It's a bit like James Martin was sort of in the building. Well, that's why he's coming back and that's forth. That's why he's King Kev. Yeah. yeah, I liked it. I might give it, a, give it a whirl myself. So, Scotland won the toss, elected to bat. And I don't think they'll be happy with this. 33 for two in the sixth over, last over of the power play. Next delivery punched again off the back foot into the cover. Still can't beat the field. Can't Barrington. And he stays becalmed on one. There's so much riding on this game. Isn't there? If Scotland would have win yeah. it, then they'd have played 2-1-2. Two, two. They'll be basically through, wouldn't they? No. Well, no. And I'll just run rate wise. Oh, I'm going to explain why. Because this is, a, it, I'm afraid, Scotland fans do not get too excited yet. Short, pulled round the corner, down towards the boundary. This should run away to the sponge. And they'll collect four, Will Barrington. That was a loose ball from Soper, banged in. And Barrington just swivelled and pulled it down to the long leg boundary. Fine legs up inside the ring. 37 for two. Now I'll explain. This is the nightmare scenario. So Scotland win. Yep. Yes. And then, let's say, Bangladesh win against Oman. You'd say they're probably favourites, yeah? Mm -hmm. So we then come into the last round of matches. Oman play Scotland. Soper, up the wicket, bowls, that's thick inside edge, jags into the pads, rolls out to the offside, there's no run. Then Oman win. If Oman then beat Scotland, yep. then in all probability, Oman's net run rate, I say in all probability, it depends on how they get on today against Bangladesh. Because they thrashed PNG, so they've got a really good positive net run rate at the moment. Scotland only just beat Bangladesh. So you could get yeah. Oman sneaking ahead of Scotland. Heartbreak but, for but Scotland. But then Bangladesh still got to beat Papua New Guinea. That's very true. Soper oh, yeah. in. Why are the off stump driven at? And missed by Barrington. Into the gloves of Kiplin Dariga. And there's no run. So, you know, I mean, when John Blaine comes on shortly, he, he's a, a veteran of World Cup disappointment in football. He'll be able to tell us about the various <laughs> different ways in which Scotland <laughs> have been denied their just desserts. And Soper is in wide of the off stump and fiddled at by Barrington. A kind of indeterminate little waft goes through to the keeper. And that is the end of the power play with Scotland labouring somewhat on 37 for two. Just the one boundary off that over. Barrington five from eight, cross nine from 12. So all I'm saying is, you know, no guarantees yet. Scotland was sitting pretty after beating Bangladesh, but it, that's the kind of heartache that this country's used to across all forms of sport and politics for the last, well, millennium, really. <laughs> is it time, to, bring, to, come in is it time <laughs> to bring John in <laughs> <laughs> on, on this note of potential crushing disappointment? No, no, your, your, point, your point is valid. I mean, we've, um, we've had a difficult time uh, across all sports. Um, just when, um, when you think we've done enough, we, send to, we tend to just find out that connotations or or um, permutations have mm. gone against us, and uh, yeah, as the, as I said in previous commentary uh, positions, it's, uh, it's the hope that kills you in Scotland. But uh, as we just look for a change of bowling spin coming into the to the attack here, 
It's going to be Siaka. He's going to be bowled across. 37 for two. What do you make of that power play, John? It feels a little undercooked on a pitch that's relatively blameless. Left arm spin of Siaka, his first delivery. He's down the leg side, swept hat, comes off pad and rolls fine on the leg side. They'll pick up a single, but no more. Leg by 38 for two. Yeah, just on that power play, uh, Dan, it, um, it's almost a screenshot. You know, I think that uh, I've watched... I've watched all the matches so far, and, and that seems to be the trend that there's two wickets down for approximately 30, 40 runs. Um, so it's a bit of a screenshot, really. Siaka in again, tossed up, pushed into the offside. Think about a single, a little bit of a mix-up. In the end, they decide against as skipper Valla runs in from cover to field. There's no run. I mean, it's clear that the objective of George Munns is to go and try and increase the, the boundary rate. Kyle Coote, sort of, we know, has been an expansive player, but he's, he's out he's short runs. He's out of form just a little bit at the moment. Here is Siaka again, Please. defended into the offside. There's no run. But the problem is with losing those two wickets in that power play, it then does put pressure. If you get two new faces at the crease, it does then put a little bit of pressure on on the batsman coming to the crease. And this time at Barrington and Cross, they've got a decent partnership just at the moment. Um, but they must ensure that scoreboard's kept ticking over. Siaka tosses up, down a wicket, comes Barrington, hits that high, over long on this should go. Oh, it's gone miles, it has gone miles and miles over the stands at long on and that's going to take a while to get back that is a marvelous shot from Barrington you said he's in decent form he is in decent form he's he's probably uh, Scotland's best player so to speak at the moment and he's um he's in rich vein of form and he'll know this attack really well but going back to Ravi's point about this the pace of a ball that was only up at 47 miles an hour you know he's just lobbed that up a leg spinner's got to give it some and especially if uh, if you've got a man who they'll know most about is uh, is good in his feet, he come quick, he comes quickly down the wicket, and he likes to do that. So he's hit that 97 metres. That's a big hit. That's the biggest hit I think we've seen thus far in the tournament, unless there was a bigger one yesterday. No, nope, you're right. That is that is the, high, the longest hit of the tournament, beating Munzee's 88 metre effort against Bangladesh a couple of days ago. Great use of the feet, got to the pitch of the ball, and smashed it over. There's a quite small stands here in Oman. That went way over the top of it, and we're we, presumably we going to have a, have we were a wait for the ball. The day there, Dan. I don't know if, it's, if the wicket is bang in the middle of the ground. I don't know if it's uh, one side is slightly shorter than than t'other. Um, well, they're playing every game mm -hmm. in this group, aren't they? Yeah. In Oman, so I guess they're going to need they're going to need at least three pitches, aren't they? And they're going to need a pitch on either side, I guess. So you're sort of looking at, at five pitches of width, yep. would you think, on the square, probably? There you go. The one to the left is obviously the old one. Yeah. Siaka in, and that's a little flatter and worked into the onside. Kept a bit low. Barrington managed to get that out to wide long on for a single. 44. 45 for two. 44 as for two, as, as we're looking at it here, I mean, you can, you can actually see that on the screen. Uh, for the listeners, that there's three pitches clearly set aside here for, for all these matches, and they're all of various shades of... Well, green. The one that um, was played on a couple of days ago, or yesterday, is, is 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 lighter. This one's a bit darker, but the one next it's even. Siaka in, and that's swept with a lovely little flick of the wrists down through deep backward square, just for a single. As a left arm throw comes in, end of the over eight, nine from it, one leg by eight off the bat, 46 for two. Barrington 12, Cross has 10, seven overs have been bowled. Yeah, good partnership from these two. Um, they're experienced campaigners. They're, they've been in this situation before. Um, and I think they just need to occupy the crease now, spend some time between the white lines. It looks like uh, Papua New Guinea are going to rely heavily upon some spin here. So they'll be looking to try and push through some overs, chalk some overs off the board. Um, but Scotland just need to keep their nerve, build a partnership. And we've talked about it. We talked about things that have changed since the last World Cup. And one of the big things was partnerships, anchor men in the innings. And, um, somebody here has to anchor things. If these two can anchor it and one of them goes on, then I think it takes it back to Ravi's point about you know a good total of 150 plus. I saw an intriguing stat on Crickbiz the other day, and you've got to bear with me because it's not it's not the simplest thing to explain. But this is the difference between dot ball percentage and boundary percentage. It's the start of a new over. Charles Amini bowling it and. Uh, Cross drives a full delivery out through wide long off for a single 40. Seven for two. So in matches where you get, um, you look at the dot ball percentage and the side which has got the lower dot ball percentage tends to win. So this next delivery is pulled down through the backwards square. That will be four. It was short by Amini and Barrington, swiveled and pulled it 
dead square of the wicket. There was a fielder at deep backward square, but he managed to get it to his left and punch it out in the air momentarily and out to the boundary for four. The 50 is up, 51 for two in the eighth over. But in matches where uh, somebody has got a lower dot ball percentage, or sorry, a higher dot ball percentage, but a higher boundary percentage, as I mean, he's in again. Forward comes Berrington, pushes into the offside. There's no run. The side which hits more boundaries tends to prevail. So I guess the moral of the story from Crickvis's point of view is you look at, the, say, the West Indian approach, it's very much boundaries. If we win the boundary count, we'll win the match. And uh, as I mean, he's in again, short again, and just punched off the back foot up to long on by Cross for another single. He moves to 12, 52 for two. 53 for two, I beg your pardon. Um, and it looked to me like Scotland were playing that really aggressive way against Bangladesh. Bangladesh ended up, as the next delivery is short again, and cut through the offside. Only be a single for Barrington. He goes to 18, 55 for two. That uh, Bangladesh ended up with the lower dot ball percentage, mm -hmm. but they were beaten comprehensively on the boundary count. And it looked that Scotland we're adopting that kind of very aggressive approach. Is that specifically down to specific players or is that probably the team approach as the next delivery is full, driven up to long off for a single by cross, 55 for two, eight overs have been bowled. I mean, it's a, it's a discussion for, a, for another time and, a, and when we've got more time, but uh, the USP and the identity of this team is, is, has gone up in the last five, 10 years. They, they have looked to try to be more aggressive in their cricket. Um, However, you know, I'm looking at it there, ironically, you know, in that over there, they've got five singles. I'm looking at the cricket that's happened so far in, uh, in the World Cup thus far, the amount of singles that have been turned down and they've just solely been focused on boundaries. Now, I get the fact that, uh, you know, you've, you've mentioned that stat and, and um, the rise of boundaries, especially in that middle period uh, and, and obviously in the, in the power play. But I still think there's value in just picking up singles. I mean, we've talked about it there the importance of the partnership between Barrington and Cross here. Ones are key. You know, keep that scoreboard ticking over and almost transfer the momentum in your direction. If you ask the bowler to do something different, that's when he delivers something, errors in length, errors in line, and that opportunity to score, a boundary comes up. If you're just dotting up at looking for a boundary, you're never, ever putting pressure on the, on, on the ball and have to take a high-risk option. Pocana starts in the over, left arm over the wicket, the seam bowler, his first delivery has worked into the onside, into a lot of space, he's played delicately, but it's not going to get back for a second, just the single, 56 for two. Daniel, I would, I would hedge a bet that actually the conversations in, in the team camp was how many singles we didn't actually pick up in, in the last match, and uh, you know, Scotland have clearly looked at this, and, and, and you can see already the amount of singles that have, that have been picked up, it's, for me, it's really good cricket. It underpins everything they're trying to do. Pakana in. That's full on middle stump. Push back up the wicket. They're going to get through for a quick single, <laughs> illustrating exactly yeah, your you point. And, and I Push think, and run. you know, it really underpins an innings and it really does um, set the tempo for the innings. It sets an urgency. If you, it, there's a good saying in cricket, and I said it on commentary before, if you allow someone to bowl at you for long enough, they will get you out. You know, what Richie Barrington's done there, he's played forward, a full face, about low-risk cricket and taken a quick single to mid-off. Good cricket. Well, what have we had? The, the last eight balls have all produced runs, seven singles and a four, as Pakana is into cross. Cross his bat raised, works this next delivery into the onside. side. There'll be another single and no more. 58 for two. Cross has 15. Barrington back on strike. So the bowlers have never been able to settle. They're bowling a different batter every ball, pretty much, at the Absolutely. moment. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and one of the other things about the way T20 cricket has, has changed in the last five years, the combination right-hand, left-hand. I know there's two right-handers that crease at the moment, but, uh, you know, we've got left-handers coming in lower down the order, and that'll pose a different challenge to the, to the Papua New Guinea bowlers. Pakana in full, dug out by Barrington. Well, he's got a fair bit of bat on that, driven it up to long off along the ground for another single. He goes to 20, 59 for two. Two balls left in the ninth over. Every delivery here, the batsman's, you know, he, he's assessing conditions, he's getting used to the pace of the pitch, he's working out the connotations or the uh, the sort of the combinations of the of the Papua New Guinea ball. He's just getting used to the environment. It, this is really good cricket. And, and you know, I know T20 cricket has gone and to back counts and, and, and your point, initial point, but this is real valuable stuff in, in the context of an innings. Here is Pekana down the leg side, thuds into the pad, but they're going to get through for another leg by. That's been a dot ball now for about... 12 minutes, I think, 60 for two. The score just being turned over with every ball. The score predictor 
158 at the moment. I, w I wonder a little bit, where, where did you stand on the, the decision to bat at the toss? Because I was, when I had it over there with Ravi Paparo, we were talking about net run rate and how significant that might prove to be as Pakali comes in to complete the over and he's driven through the offside for another single. So six runs off that over, five off the bat and one leg by. Scotland 61 for two from nine overs. Barrington 21, Cross has 15. Buys because I thought they had an opportunity with a PNG side that's not got a lot of confidence probably with the bat. There are only two real major performers in their first match. A lot tends to rely on their batting on their captain. having to set in the dark.